hello okay <clears throat> I've had a lot of questions about um, the clay that I'm selling um, people have been asking me is it air drying clay okay so I thought I would just explain a little bit about what air drying clay actually is and the differences between ordinary clay and air drying clay okay so this is some air drying clay that I've just rolled out and um, dried out a little bit. And this is just my normal terracotta. This is what I'm selling here. They're different colors because clay just comes in lots of different colors. Um, basically this one is a terracotta and it has a lot of red iron oxide in the clay body. And that is why it is that color. Whereas this one has much less um, in fact, probably no red iron oxide, or at least very, very little. So that's why this one fires to like a buff colour, an off-white colour. And this one is your standard terracotta flower pot clay type thing. So the colours, you know, you just do get different coloured clays. It's dug out of the ground, it comes out. You look at the soil all around the country, it's different colours. It's the same, the same thing with clays. Um, okay, so air drying clay is ordinary clay. This is a piece of air drying clay um, that's just a squidgy bit. It's just ordinary clay, but what it's it's actually got these nylon fibers mixed in. If I come really close, they're super fine. I mean, that's in a big clump. I don't know if you can see. Can you see how really, really fine they are? Almost like little cobwebs. And you can actually buy this. I mean, I buy this, or at least I used to use it. Um, to mix in with my clay, you can buy it. I think I just bought mine from Wix. It's something to do with, what's it called? Um, oh, here we are. No crack concrete. So it's just, that's all it is. So it's just ordinary clay that has these nylon fibres mixed in. Um, the reason that they mix the nylon fibres into air drying clay um, is, if I just show you, if you pull a piece of air drying clay apart, oh, I don't think you'll be able to see. You probably can't see. Oh, maybe a little bit. Can you see it's hairy? Yeah? So you can see the nylon fibers that are mixed in. Um, and as I was saying, the reason they mix the nylon fibers in is so that when the clay is dry, um, this is a dried piece of air drying clay. Let's do a little experiment. It's when the clay is dry, the nylon fibers kind of mesh the clay together a little bit. They mesh the particles together, all right? In the same way that it's used for, you know, preventing concrete from cracking. It's exactly the same principle. So this is air drying clay. Let's see what happens. And it's dry, a little bit dry. Let's see. Oh, I'm kind of putting quite a lot of pressure. Can you see it's sort of cracking and breaking and... And look, it's kind of hanging on in there, you know? It doesn't really wanna, I'm pulling it apart and oh, now it's come apart. And you can probably see the hairs, okay? That have meshed that together. So this is uh, basically what we would call green strength. So before a piece of clay has been fired, we talk about green wear. Um, and it just gives it more strength when it's when it's drying and when it's dry. Um, so this is an ordinary piece of terracotta. I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to break that in the same way. I'm bending it. It's cracking and, and it's very easy to pull apart. Can you see there's no fibres meshing this one together at all? So that's why um, they mix the fibres in to make it a little bit stronger. You can still fire air drying clay. Um, you know, the nylon fibers, they just burn away in the kiln. So they just disappear. Um, yeah, so it's not really um, sort of rocket science. Uh, you know, it just makes your clay a little bit stronger when it's green. Um, it's quite expensive. And if you're gonna have your work fired anyway the best thing for you to do would be to bring your stuff here while it's still damp because when clay is still damp um it's like you can fix it basically if it breaks okay um so another thing i wanted to say was um i picked up some very sweet things today from a household in holt they're very cute oh, oh that one's that way around i think 
yeah, I think they're little, little mice. Maybe it's a mouse and a cat. Anyway, these are quite heavy and they are quite solid. So I won't be able to put these in the kiln and fire these, unfortunately, because they are too thick. So if you keep watching videos, um, you'll begin to understand that, you know, I keep talking about even thickness and, you know, if there was an air bubble deep inside this, then um, I think my lodge is about to come in. No, maybe not. Anyway, he's out there. I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, um, so basically you, you can't, you know, you can't make them too thick. If you do make them thick, what you need to do is get a spoon um, some kind of spoon, somehow have a dig around in your kitchen cupboard and you want to just kind of, well actually what you want to do is mark around the edge so that you don't, so you give yourself like a thickness that you're going to stick to, yeah, and then I would scoop that out, so I'm being quite careful, can you see I'm just scooping it out with my spoon. I've never done it with a spoon before, but hey, kind of works, doesn't it? Oh, oh, it's quite sort of sticky. There we go. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Have a look at that. Oh, can you see that? That is a massive air bubble in a thick piece of clay. Oh, so that's lucky. Very lucky that I'm doing this because that would definitely have exploded in my kiln. And we definitely don't want that to happen. <laughs> and also another thing with these ones, actually, once you've scooped it out, it's actually a bit like a little thumb pot, isn't it? That's just upside down. So if you want to make things like this, just think a little bit like, oh, well, I know how to do a thumb pot. Maybe I could make my thumb pot into a creature, okay? So that's looking much better now, and it's thinner. And we've got rid of the air and the weight. Um, I don't want to mess with it too much. I, I'm sorry, whosoever this is, I don't know your name. And I feel bad, I feel a little bit bad. But basically, I just saved this mouse's life. So actually, I'm basically a hero. Um, and I'm going to do the same with this one. And also, if you're joining little things on to your bits of clay, make sure that you're using the score and slip method. I'm going to need to hollow this one out as well. Um, so I hope that explains the difference between air drying clay and ordinary clay. I have ordinary clay here. It is £10 for a full bag um, or £5 for half a bag. I'm in Holt. Uh, you're really welcome to get in contact with me if you want to buy some and come and collect it safely as part of um, another shopping trip so that you're not making extra journeys to get here um, and you know if you would like me to fire your stuff then we can arrange that too you just need to make sure it is you know it is fireable make sure I can actually put it in the kiln by making sure we're not doing things that are too thick um, and too big um, and what else was I going to say yes so I'm char going to charge one pound per item to fire your work you would leave it here in a box with your names clearly written on your work and with your name and the money in the box I would then stack it in my kiln room I would dry that out for you and I will fire it for you and I will then let you know when it's fired you will then be able to come back and pick your stuff up from me and at that time when you pick up your work uh, you might want to if you really love it you may want to buy a little decorating kit so i'm going to be putting together kits of color and glaze so underglaze it's called underglaze and color and you will be able to paint your work and glaze your work at home and then bring it back to me again for its final firing or its glaze firing, okay? And then you would come and collect it for the last time and you will have your lovely pottery finished, glossy, shiny, glazed, all done and dusted and um, all done at home as well. So that's how this is gonna work. 
okay so i've got the first little things to to fire now so they're going to take a they're going to take a few days to dry out um because this one's a bit thick i might get it a little bit thinner actually uh, but I don't want to be doing really all the hollowing out, you know, I can't be doing all of that. This is what you need to be doing at home. I don't mind doing it for these, for these poor little creatures because, you know, they, you didn't know. Whoever made them, you didn't, you didn't know that they needed to be hollow, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's it really. So don't bother about air drying clay. It's really expensive. It's, you know, pfft. It's not that great. I mean, it does have a place, don't get me wrong. It is really good stuff and I ha I, ha I do love it actually. Um, but for what we're doing, you don't need to go and buy air drying clay. And if you want something to really last, um, like really last for forever until it, you drop it and then it breaks and then the shards of clay will last forever, um, then just, just come and get some of this clay and we'll get it fired, you know, and then it really will become a ceramic material and be very, very long lasting, okay? Hope that all makes sense. Ask me questions, get in touch, and um, yeah, hope, come and buy some clay. See you soon, bye.